Brothers in Arms has sold over 30 million copies over the years and launched a world tour in 1985. It was during this tour that Mark saw the need for a new kind of guitar, but to find it, he needed to travel all the way to the United States of America. Mark and I heading into Soho, New York, to the legendary guitar shop of one Rudy Pensar. My great friend Rudy, he came over from Argentina and started working in a music shop on 48th Street and eventually managed to secure a little hole in the wall for a shop for himself. It was a tiny little place when I met Rudy, but he's done very well over the years. Well, I've never been there before, so this is going to be a real treat for well, me. I think it will be a treat for you. It's going to be the most beautiful guitar shop in the world. I'm pretty sure that you'll agree when you see it. Here we are, my friend. Here we are. Wow. It's sort of like a celebration, if you like. A celebration of the guitar for, for every reason that you can think of, yeah, you know. Yeah. Let's go Hello inside. Let's have a look inside. Yeah. Hope Rudy's there. Here we are. Oh, Rudy, oh, look at this. Here we go. Rudy! Rudy! Rudy. Hey! <laughs> Where are you, brother? Very good, Rudy. Hello, man. Good to hey, see Mark. you, pal. Well, how are you? Yeah, long time to you. Long time to see this guy. Yeah. See you, man. Rudy has owned a guitar shop in New York since 1977, and over the years, his passion for guitars has earned him a reputation of being one of the best in the business. So, Rudy, yeah. how long have you been collecting? I mean, is this uh, you know, uh, all your life? Yeah, all my life. I uh, basically, when I got into instruments, guitars, when I, my first band in Argentina, I was 10 years old, and. I was trying to get some pieces there, and, and yeah. yeah, but intensely, I got more involved when I came to America because it was, right. it's more guitars. But I, you know, it's the love of my life since, seven, since I'm seven. Mark has been a customer of Rudy's for years, but when he came to Rudy in 1987, he wasn't looking for an old guitar off the shelf. Okay, so the reason why we're here, Rudy, is because this is the fifth uh, guitar in the series, of Mark's guitar series, hmm. and this is the uh, the Penser, which of course is named after you, the, you know, Rudy Penser. Absolutely. If we could right. go upstairs and have a look at some of these uh, these Penser's, brilliant. You've still got some now. for sale, Rudy. I can't believe it. <laughs> more than one or two. More than one or two. <laughs> Sound of the pencil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. OK, so we, we're here to hear the story of how you guys, you two guys, got together in a cafe and decided that you wanted to make a guitar which essentially Mark could use on stage that sounded like a Strat and then sounded like a Gibson as well. So this is where this came about. The, the whole idea, John, really, was to, you know, it was when we were playing, I don't know whether you remember, but well, it was just getting into too many guitar changes. Yeah, I, mean, I do remember you, the guitar You wanted changes. to have something that you could, that I could just get a wider range of sounds from. I remember listening to Mark saying, I like the shape of the Strat, but some things about a Gibson guitar that attracts me. And, and we used to go to this coffee shop all the time, and we started with a little napkin from a place, remember, it's longer gone. Yeah, it was a place called Fritzl's. It Fritzl's. was just up, <laughs> up from the store, yeah. and we used to go and get a cup of coffee there, yeah. But I like the idea. I like the challenge to design it, and then we make it, and, and yeah. they become, you know, the MK1. And, and, you know, it would be used on things like, um, I like call an Elvis. <laughs> So this is the finished article, but what I'm interested in actually is having a look at, um, you know, the basic sort of raw, you know, the actual sort of governance. Well, basically, yeah. you know, this is the first stage of the guitar. Later around, it goes applied to a beautiful piece of mahogany. Yeah. To attach these two pieces of wood after this glue, it's a beautiful touch to do a banding all around. The marriage of between the two woods, and this seals the marriage. Mm, and, yeah. and then this is basically, if you think about a piano as a fingerboard, the, the, the keyboard, yeah. this, is the, this is one of the most important uh, pieces of the guitar playing because <clears throat> here is where he's going to play and have the sustain yeah. and bending and everything. You're going to be able to, to bend very high. See, look, he can On bend. These you can't, yeah. yeah. Wow, and yeah, the note never right. dies.
you know, you can really appreciate it, something like this, where there's been no compromise, yeah. where every fret has been put in very yeah. carefully. Yeah. Every little thing that's yeah, yeah. been drilled has been drilled absolutely precision yeah. straight. Yeah. So you're talking about degrees of... You're talking about the Rolls Royce. Tiny, yeah. Well, in Ferrari. I think it's a better word for this, right, isn't right. it? So guitar number five is the Pensa Mark I, designed on a napkin, but destined to become an icon. The Pensa featured on Dire Straits' sixth and final album, On Every Street, and became the first in a line of exquisite custom-built guitars and basses. But despite the extraordinary craftsmanship of these guitars, we were surrounded by instruments of perhaps even greater beauty. Masterworks Rudy had collected, and in particular the work of one unrivaled guitar maker and his masterpiece, the Radio City Archtop, inspired by the iconic New York Theatre. I saw that guitar in, across the street from me, and this called my attention. And I ran across the street and I said to the guy, who made this guitar? He said, oh, he is the Stradivarius of the guitar. Mr. Senior Monteleone. John Monteleone is the latest and perhaps the last in a line of master New York guitar makers. And tomorrow we'll be seeing the birthplace of these instruments. When did you first meet John? Uh, well, it through Rudy? Or was yes, it, was, well, it was through Rudy. Rudy put a Radio City guitar into my hands, and I gave it straight back to him and said, I am not worthy of this thing. I mean, this is the most beautiful thing. It's got to be the most beautiful arch top in the world. Right up at such a level that really, you almost ask yourself, where does sanity end and something else take over?